Yo, 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 what's good? What's poppin'? Ooh, my mouth already watering, okay, for my guest today. You already see what's going on. Mystique Talk X Podcast. We are motherfucking back like we didn't leave. We back on your computer screen, your streaming station. However the fuck you getting this, this where we at. And today, I got the one and only Rico motherfucking strong. I had to say that so strong right. <laughs> and powerful. Y'all didn't, he, didn't, he don't need no introduction. You know who the fuck it was when What's he sat deal? down What's right the deal, now. Man? So What's the deal? Definitely, I am so, so, so happy that you are here today. I mean, I would say it's been like a rare occasion to see you kind of speak out, but I've been seeing you speak out rarely, but it's been doing some real big things because you're a big individual. Let's talk about it. Um, Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, I don't, you know, I don't really do too much, man. I don't really be saying too much, but just because. Pause. You. Yeah. Please. Yeah, it's all good. All Go right, we'll, we'll start that over. Editor, you. You. What's good? What's poppin'? It's your girl, Ebony Goddess Mystique. Yo, we Mystique Talk X Podcast. We Mystique Talk X Podcast. Right. We the illiterate podcast. No, but you already know what time it is. Mystique Talk X Podcast. We have the one and only. I don't really, I be, I be don't want to like do it so fast, like say their name and stuff because I be trying to build up the momentum. But some <laughs> of these people don't need no motherfucking introduction. So I'm just going right. to get right into it. If you don't know, you've been underneath a motherfucking rock. Rico Strong is here today. What's the motherfucking On a titty deal. Tuesday. Titty Tuesday. Rico Strong and a My titties titty out, Tuesday. your titties out. Okay. <laughs> for sure. Yo, yo, yo. Let me let me stop playing because it's an absolute motherfucking honor for you to be here today on the Pets Podcast. I, appreciate I would say it's a rare thing, but I mean, I've seen you rarely come out and talk, but you've been making some really big, big motion when you come out and speak. So I just yeah. had to have you here today. Yeah, man. I um I get asked to do podcasts all the time, and I just I got the Not sauce, bad. and motherfuckers really want it, but it's like you can't give it to everybody. So it's always to me, it's exclusive because I only want to talk to who's important to me. You feel me? So it's like everybody can't get that. <laughs> so um, it's giving like it's giving best me. head ever. Shout out to assholes live forever. Or is it giving? Am I special? Because you, you are, are definitely. Oh my God, Mr. Strong said. Come on, let's do this. Oh my man. God, thank you so much. My 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 panties is wet. But we're gonna talk <laughs> about that on another show. It's not this show. Yo, let's get right into it. First of all, Mr. Rico Strong, mm -hmm. your name is Rico. Like yes. you looking at you, and I'm and I'm from the East Coast, baby. I know what a Dominican look like. I know what a Cuban look like. They be darker <laughs> than me speaking that Espanol. Right. But 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 you you giving black men to me, but you is a whole Latino. Is yeah. this correct? Yeah, I'm black Latino. <laughs> half Puerto Rican, half black. You feel me? Puerto Rican. Okay. I love that. So wait, but that, I don't really see a lot of Puerto Ricans come on this side. Like, what you know, from the West Coast. Are you from like LA, Las Vegas area? Long Beach, I'm from East Side Long Beach. How the hell your Puerto Rican ass get over here? <laughs> My mama. <laughs> what? So you like you you? Cause it's different. It's me coming from the East Coast. I had to learn that. You know, not yeah. that I'm naive about culture. Cause that's like saying all black people are the same. You know, we all come from. The, we go different come from parts, the same, yeah. different, same continent, but different parts. So, all yeah. Spanish people are not the same. But you over here in Cali, that's Mexican land. So, and the food <laughs> is not the same. The Spanish hey. is not the same. It is. I mean, we got a good card over here. I mean, it's, it's a lot of Latino, a lot of Hispanic love on the West Coast. So, I mean, we have shit. We just what? We just had the Puerto Rican festival here about a week ago in Las Vegas. Yeah, it was one here in Las Vegas. They have well, one in Long I Beach that, every year in Long Beach. It's a big one in New York. Then they just had the one in New York. I still want to go to that one though. You never been? I ain't never been in New York. Um, the world, I'm confused because you done been all over the world. We're going to get into that. Man, but so you you bypass New York? I'm confused about this. That's crazy. And I know all your New York fans been waiting for you to get there. Man, I'm in New Jersey. All your Puerto Rican fans. I know you have, which you been in Exotica, huh? Yeah, that one time. But <laughs> it was fun. I was mad I didn't get to go to New York because I love New York people. I I'm love New York women. <laughs> oh, I know they love you too. Let's you talk too. about it though. Like, so... Yeah. Where uh, Rico Strong was that like a name that you was given through your fame through you being uh, in the industry or is that just your, like Rico? Nah. That's you. Well, to explain my name, my name has been Rico all my life because I'm half Puerto Rican. That is my middle name. Strong. I just kind of just put that into it because I come from Long Beach and I feel like it's a strong city. Mm. We call it Strong Beach. So within me being Puerto Rican, I come from a strong Latin background and Black background. So I just put it together. It just came naturally. 
Rico Strong. Do you speak Spanish? Poquito. Espanol? Poquito papi. Not as much as I should. Shit, okay. But Do you, so, so is it your mom that's Spanish? Yeah, my mom's Puerto Rican. And she speak Puerto Rican all mm -hmm. the time? And you didn't pick up none of that shit? I mean, I did. I used to speak five languages, <laughs> no cap. Uh, I spoke five languages by the age of six. But I did all that with my father. And then when my father passed when I was 11, mm. I kind of like shunned out. So I didn't want to speak anything that I did with my dad because I was so fucked up by it. Makes sense. But I Honestly. regret it now as an adult mm -hmm. that I don't speak, I used to speak French, Creole, English, Spanish, and full sign language. And I don't speak none of that shit no more. It's <laughs> so, almost like a muscle. You got to yeah. kind of exercise it. Like, like a language, especially if it's foreign, you got to keep practicing it to right. you know, become fluent. I understand, remember. That's what's up. So, I don't know, I regret that shit, but I definitely want to get back into it. Maybe it's a hobby I pick up when I turn 40. I know you got a lot of Spanish mommies okay. that'll teach you. <laughs> they do, they be trying. I was just in Miami, man. They was... On you tough. Man. On you strong. On me heavy. Let's talk about that. So, like, you you kind of 18. Give us what, like, 18 Rico looked like. And maybe, were you in Long Beach at that time? Yep. And I know you, you was probably running around here slaying all the bitches. Or was yeah. it the fact that you was kind of shy and had all this sexual activity and they was they was sleeping on you? I mean, and you had um, to show them what the it was. The crazy thing <laughs> is about me is I've always been a shy person. I'm even still shy now, which even like with certain situations. Yeah. Like you see, I can't really be still because I'm always like that. People are like, nigga, how he you shy? He rocking like a motherfucker, y'all. How you shy? Because I don't, don't be talking. Like, how you shy as a porn star? You ain't, like, you I because... ain't making you nervous now, am I? We, yes. done, we done had a few <laughs> occasions on film. We but have, you know that's work. He's a real professional, so I don't know. This is a little bit. Hey, and, <laughs> well, check, and, and check them scenes out. All right, we got three. Viral as shit. Go crazy. Like I swear, y'all know. <laughs> but yeah, so what, what did that look like? Eighteen-year-old Rico, like running around. How was you with the um, ladies? I mean, I always been real impactful with the ladies. That was just a Long Beach thing, though. Like, I had already, I was already like two hundred and ten pounds, working out, fully in shape, playing ball. I was at West LA College, playing ball. Um, yeah, because you are you are athletic. Yeah, I was, I run, I was running back, and then I was a stripper at that time at eighteen. What? Uh, ready? So let's uh, talk. What the fuck was you doing stripping at eighteen? Nigga, I was stripping no cap. I was I was I was stripping at fifteen. I was still in high school. Are we're not gonna talk about <laughs> it. They didn't know. Uh, aware. I don't you worry. If you know who you are, but don't you worry. This is they not didn't know place. though. Nobody, nobody knew. I had a fake right, ID. But what the fuck? Okay, talk about that being fifteen with your little ass self. You supposed to be, but you seem like to me you was built already. I was big though. Um, what the fuck? You supposed to be running around playing football. I was, and I was running around in and out them bitches too. I'm a hollering. Okay, let's talk about this. Okay. Any, any of you, we not, we are not, um, I'm not approving this at all. <laughs> but I'm very interested in what the fuck is going on here. So 15 years old, you in the strip club. Let's bypass it. I can't do that. Let's go to 18. We had 18, 18 in the strip we were 18. club. Okay. What was that like though, for real? The strip I mean, club life being so young and a male. It was active as fuck. You know, we dance, what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and shit, on any given night, it's always like 250 to 300 women in the club. What? It's only like 15 male dancers, and shit, we was making bank. You and, wasn't uh, nervous? Nah, because I used to love, I love to dance. I come from that culture. Like in California, we always been dancing since we was young, just... But this we, is we not like big break, break dancing, dancing and, and all that. Nah, you wasn't in but the strip club doing that. You it was comes in all together. That all, and like genuine. That all comes into a look of it. When you're putting on your show, it all come into a play. Yeah, you're right. Especially Physical body structure, especially with a male. And you're right. And then that shit rolls off into sex as well. You feel me? Where I nigga Wait, what move. happened? Hold on, pause. What? We was talking about stripping. We ain't said nothing about sex. Let's let's take. But the heat. movement, you know what I'm saying? Oh, the movement okay. of dancing. Because we was doing was y'all was it one of them type of parties? Oh no, it wasn't that. Was? Wasn't none of that going on. Oh. But I'm just saying it's a body movement. It's you wonder. feel me? <laughs> <laughs> you try to catch me who up did you that. who did you like who did you look at? Because everybody had a like dancing guy or girl. Somebody like I'm gonna go in the club and fuck them up with this move right here. Like, so how who would you looking at? Cause at the time was it was it genuine? <laughs> I mean, genuine had that. Who? Remember, genuine used to be a dancer. Uh, he used he to jump on it. I could just see no, you now. No, genuine, genuine was a stripper. Oh, for real? Yeah. Did y'all know that? Everybody know that. Shit. I just thought he took real. Uh, right, I'm lost. <laughs> I was too busy looking between his pants while he was slipping and sliding around that stage. Uh -oh. But yeah. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, where did you learn how to do, get all this confidence to be doing this type of shit so young? I mean, it just came about, man. It's just like a, a thing. You know, I started working out very young, so I was very confident in my body at the time. You know, and it was just like, you know, once you get your first one, you kind of just, you kind of get into it and it falls. You nervous your first time especially, but then after you can repetitively keep doing it, 
it becomes natural. So what, what year is this? Let's date this. Shit, that's 05, 06. What? I started, and that started, I, I, then I went right into porn. Yeah, because you started in 2004. No, no, I was like high school. I started 2005, uh, one and six. Like okay, right. so the internet is a little bit, they maybe gave you all, a year. Maybe all. But uh, before you started, right. they'd have made you grown too fast, because they say 2004. I tried to do a little research, y'all. Yeah, but yeah, me. so 2005. Yep. So, like, you wasn't doing any illegal sexing at these clubs. You was nah. getting your money. How much was you making at this time in 2004 being a stripper? Shit, man. It, it varied on a on good night. Up. What a good oh, night look shit, like. on a good night, you make like a band. Wow. Because men only go on stage once. Okay. Over like how women do multiple times a night. You actually put on like an actual show and performance. Mm -hmm. So you only go on one time in your slot. So if I'm number six that night, I go on number six and then... I dance, make my bread, and then I just mingle in the club the rest of the night, talking, you know what I'm saying, finessing, having drinks, et cetera, et cetera. So now I've been watching P-Valley sometimes, and I know a few scrippers, and I, most of them are girls. I know a yeah. few guys, too, and, you know, there'd be some drama in the script, uh, in the script club. Oh, it's always drama. Um, let's talk about a, a real dramatic time you remember real quick in your strip club days as a male. Oh, man. It, it was been so many, because there's been, so <laughs> been so many fights. Dancers fighting each other over bitches, money. I didn't have to, I fought like five bitches one night. <laughs> what that was about? That sounded like a good one. What the hell? The bitch threw a drink on me. Oh, no. And and our other homegirl, like, I started arguing with the bitch, so then the bitch hit me with a chair, like a metal chair. And from there, it was on. Okay, like, so because you're not an abusive person, but nah. it sounded like somebody was trying to attack you. Yeah, they hit me with that metal chair. It was on for me. Yeah, metal chair is, I'm <laughs> sorry, I don't give a damn what gender you are. We yeah. were somebody that fucked up. It was knockout season. I understand. But no, it's, that shit crazy, man, like. Actually, oh, not, not even no bullshit. When I'm, that's, what made, that's what made me come to Vegas. Because I was coming out here, because I ended up getting kicked out of the clubs in, in California. Because I ended up shooting up one, and I kept fighting at the other ones. So I was coming out here every weekend to dance at, at, the, uh, I, it the Spanish, at the club called uh, Palomino. And actually, we having our reunion this Saturday. Really? You yeah. going to go? Yeah, I'm going to show Palomino up. here in Las yeah. Vegas? Yeah. I might have to slide down there. You would love it. it, it it'd be fun just to see. I'm not dancing. I'm fat now. But No, I love it. They love you, Rico. <laughs> but I'm going to show the fuck up, though. Just that's for my people. Up. That'd be fun. So that's like a, I mean, I don't know if it's a real, I mean, because there are people that consider maybe stripping not sex work, but it is it a is. form of sex work. So it's not very behold to me for you to get into porn, but let's talk about that. Like, were you really a sexual person? How did you get from stripping into um, like your first porn scene? I mean, um, let's I've talk about that. I've always been a, been a sexual person. Like I learned about sex very early in my age, because I was just, I was very smart. So I was nosy to everything. I always wanted to know, you know. So you was like a porn watcher as a like, you know. I was, Look, more, I was just more 18. into... I try to stay at that 18 and nah, up, y'all. way younger than But that. I just... You, we we want to tap in sometimes, too, uh, respectively. How, what was the first... How old was you when you first started watching porn? Shit. I had a magazine when I was, like, nine. It, it's the magazine. <laughs> the magazine. You feel me? But then, you know, you sneak in your parents' rooms and shit, found the old VHS... Uh, tapes be like, ooh, this feels like, good. Let me start looking at shit. You know, my shit was rubbing on door anyway. <laughs> what, you, what was you rubbing on? I mean, anything that shit hit that twat, and you'd be like, wow, it's a new experience. Like, that feels different. Like, okay, nah, I like man, that a was, lot. I've been the sex has always been a big part of my life. Like I said, I lost my virginity at 11, and from then it was on. I needed some every day. I was like, fiend, I was hooked to it. But, so at 11, like, was that something that you feel like affected you in any way, or would you think that was more of a positive thing? So I mean, it affects really people even, differently. You don't, I mean, you don't, I don't really know. Like, I never really looked at it like that. Some people said I was probably abused because my the person I had sex with was 19. Um, but I didn't look at it, it was like consensual? that. Yeah, it was consensual? Yeah, it was consensual. So it couldn't have been rape, but it's just nah, the age factor. it was factor. just the age gap. And I have a pro I, this is the thing. <laughs> I, I don't like when the, the, the non-consensual, the weirdo shit yeah. is all right. We're not talking, to, we don't fuck with that. Yeah, none of period. that. Period. None of that. But, like, when I was younger, and you think about maybe, like, Aaliyah and the R. Kelly situation, not to bring that up because he's already been prosecuted, so we can. But my whole, pro my whole thing about it is when I was young, I wasn't of age of 18. I liked older niggas. Yeah. I liked older men. Those were the guys who bring me food at McDonald's, like, at my yeah. high school I mean, and picked me up. I look and, at it the same situation. It's like... Nigga, they we was all, old, we, we I ain't gonna school, lie. We all knew the girls that was fucking with the older niggas. We, so we didn't but have, it was 100% consensual. We didn't have cars. So we see her in the 10th grade getting picked up by the homie in the hood. Mm -hmm. No one cut 22. <laughs> you feel me? And she's 16. But nobody ever said nothing like that. It was, it was cool then. Oh, she, she fucking woo-dee-woo. You know what I'm saying? So 
it's just a, it's a, it's a weird. So thing for you, world. it was almost like a positive sexual experience because you loved it. You became more. So yeah. now you say you became addicted. Is the was the addiction to sex a good thing or like because some addictions are good? Was it more of a I mean, healthy thing? I mean, it was good for me. It was shit. I loved it. So yeah. I could see that, and I I could see he loves it. <laughs> but you know the funniest shit? I never like I never planned on doing porn. I never thought about doing porn. I never wanted to. Like I, most niggas, like oh I want to get into this. Like I was happy with being an athlete. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to you know go to the Olympics and things like that. But, you just you know, was sexy and you know how to fuck. So what was right. your first scene like and who was that with? Uh, my first, first scene was with uh, my ex. And one of my exes, actually, which is Sky Black. Shout out to Sky Black. This is 2005. She was my girlfriend at the time. She used to come see me in a strip club and shit. And then I remember I got in some trouble at the club and then she was like, you want to make some money? <laughs> woo, woo. But I'm like, so why don't you just come on and do a scene? And I'm like, nah, I don't want She to was already show. a porn star. At yeah, time. she was one of the, a the big biggest. She was the star. biggest at that time. Okay. Her, Sky, it was Sky, Beauty. It was the biggest dark skin women in porn. Biggest girls in porn let's at that time. Let's go. And now, pause. Um, let's talk about that real quick. Biggest women in porn. That mean like the porn industry at the time. Yes. And it didn't matter about her, they, they, that the fact that they were weren't white girls. Right. They uh, this is more on like not an industry level but on a more social level right. like outside the industry big mainstream. Yeah. Okay, got it. They was just they that was that. They happen to be black. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and of the darker color, so okay. it was beautiful. Because you know they try to stereotype that shit differently. We just saying go on, you carry me? on. We'll get into but that. <laughs> that's what made it even better. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So my first scene was with uh was with her for west coast productions shout out to west coast shout out to west coast. without them it would be no me <laughs> so and without her it would be no me um it was crazy my first scene but it was i, I, I murdered it i killed it you see my winner because i was already comfortable with her so it was kind of easy but then it's like i look at you just like just show off like you do and but you make it sound easy you are a professional however i mean let's keep it real it's a lot of men out here, even a lot of women who feel like they could do a main, like real pornography, oh, yeah. but it's like 12 people sometimes, even more on a set, and they're watching you fuck. Like, yeah. how was that? Like, West Coast Productions is well, a major, major, my major first, porn My first scene, it wasn't a lot of people, because one, like I told you before, I don't like a lot of people around, like behind me and oh, around so you me. let them That's know. That's just me coming from okay. my street side, so I let them know what make me feel comfortable. Cool. I've always had that bravado about myself. If I don't like something, I'm going to say something. And that he does. Like, That's Rico. I don't, like, nigga, hey, it's the king. Me, what you niggas doing here? Like, which, I don't need people sitting around telling me. If I can control that situation, most time I do, I will. So, it was really, when I did this scene, it was me, her, Terry Burton, and a PA. But even the night before I did my first scene, I got sat down by some veterans, Diana DeVoe, uh, Fetish Fatale, Johnny Depp, and they sat me down and explained a lot to me um, about you know how to perform, what to hold back. Diana DeVoe showed me how to do positions. Look at this. Where to put my hand this at, where not to put my nowadays. hand at. This is what we're missing nowadays. I um, made them. Were they so, your agents or just friends? No, those performers and directors. Those are like legends. Diana DeVoe was a legendary performer. But no Diana real uh, business. But we knew each other personally as just like more I just you, friends giving yeah, you game. Yeah, telling That's me the truth what's up. Um, about what to do and what not to do, um, and where to put your hands at. You and then nobody. Wow. I kind of naturally knew body movements. So if a camera moves, I kind of know where to move to and what not to do. It's like it's kind of like an unspoken thing of how I was so good at so young. And that's kind of why I took off in the industry, I think, because they was like, damn, this nigga can do everything. We don't really have to tell him he's only 19, turning 20. And it was like, it's like an entity. It was only one of me, you know what I'm saying? So again, I, from there, I just, I studied. Like, I'm a big person on studying shit. So like, the people that I refrain to look to was, I look at Mr. Marcus, because my body type style is tight towards his. Once again, Mr. Um, Marcus, you coming up, we got to get you on here. Um, These legends I love at, you. I looked at him and his, some of his work. Okay. And then also I looked at Wesley Pipes. And mm -hmm. I kind of took a little bit of Marcus and a little bit of Wesley, okay. and then I mixed it in with me. Yeah. And that's that's what it Rick that's what it strong. became. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's where I got my shit talking from with Wesley. I got my like <laughs> suave okay. demeanor kind of from Marcus, and like to crack little jokes and laugh and shit like that. So that was that, and I took it and bled in, and it evolved into me. You know what I'm saying? So and shit, now we're 20 years deep. <laughs> 20 years deep. We ain't gonna fast forward that fast though. We're gonna talk about when we get back from this little break. Um, just, just Rico, just come back. We gonna talk about a few things. I got a lot of shit on my mind. I wanna Stay get tuned. to him. Stay motherfucker tuned. We just gonna go on a quick break. Come right back with Talk as podcast with the one and motherfucking only Rico Strong. Be right back. <laughs> I'm just making sure it's recording. Check it. Okay. You wanna drink of water? You good? I'm good. Okay. All right, all right, all right. We are back. Um, like we never motherfucking let 
<laughs> like with my <laughs> like we never motherfucking left. I'm right. gonna get it together, don't worry about this. Mystique it's, Talk X Podcast. It's the Patron. Okay, it's okay, we lit. It with, gets you uh, Mystique Talk X Podcast with the one and only Rico Strong.